going to tell you a story, and it's not going to be neat or easy to follow. It's going to take 10 parts, and you're going to need to pay attention. Did I say that right? Oh, and there may be a hint of a cycle. Welcome to the Aurora Wasteland Life Cycle. Episode 6, Good Vibrations from a Park Ranger. I think I've stumbled across something, something big, something I need to tell the world about. I'm not sure how to do so because I don't know if I fully understand it. It's bigger than everything, so I'm going to need you to pay attention, read between the lines, and come up with your own conclusions because I'm not going to lay it out for you. I've discovered ten posts in the Aurora Wasteland that when laid together tell a story. A story that is going to change the world. So pay attention. Ugh, I think I said that already. But it's true. Pay attention and think. Think outside the box as well. You'll see. Maybe. Archived Aurora Wasteland post number six. Post extracted from encrypted Brightness Falls Park security logs. The Beach Boys harmonized their intent to have good vibrations as the music filled the inside of Owen's Jeep. His finger rested casually on the radio dial and his palm on the gear shifter. It had been an unpleasant night. Tears stained his cheeks. Their size matched the size of the raindrops that hammered the window. But that was Owen. Everything he did was big. Big tears, big gestures, big muscles. If he had a motto, that would be it. He loved hard and he fell even harder. The lights from his jeep reflected the rain off the drenched pavement. The yellow lines seemed to jump up at him as he passed over each one. He always drove down the center of the road, aka playing Pac-Man, when it was dark like this. There were limited streetlights around the park, part of the national movement to dim light pollution in federal funded parks. Owen was all for whatever kept the parks from becoming the Vegas version of a park. He didn't want brand name chain stores in the town. He didn't want trailers the size of houses filling the campground. He just wanted nature to be enjoyed in the way it was intended to be, which is to say with a cup of coffee, a tent, and a beautiful woman next to him. The backpack on the seat next to him tremored at the rumble of the jeep. Owen glanced at it and placed his hand on top of it. He could still feel the little box inside. Another fresh round of tears broke free from his eyes. He wiped them as he passed the road sign that stated Brightness Falls. The town site for the park was only 10 kilometers away. He loved the town. It was the only one he could ever see himself living in. The quintessential mountain town. He'd been lucky enough to get a job at the park as a ranger when they'd opened the park back up. And every day since, he'd been living his best life. They'd been paying him to hike, swim, yell at idiots, and take care of this magical place. If he could have sex with the park, he would have. Every morning, he'd get up, make coffee, and drive to another part of the park to enjoy the sunrise. Then he'd break out his phone and record another episode of his podcast, Good Vibrations, pairing morning sunrises with Beach Boy songs. The gist of the show was that he described where he was, the sunrise, his coffee, and finally what Beach Boy song went best with it all. It was wildly unpopular, but he did it for himself. And if the world wasn't as sophisticated as him, then they can all sail on. Caroline was supposed to join him today. It was episode 100. She was going to be his first official guest on the show. But that wasn't going to happen now. Not after last night. Their fight had been such a huge blowout, he'd ended up staying the night at a ranger outpost. The mosquitoes were quite thankful for it. Owen's back wasn't. The cots at the outpost were garbage, and not built for a man his size. They never tell you that once you start exercising, your shoulders are going to be too big for just about everything. The number of door frames he bumped into now was embarrassing. But despite the constant battle with door frames and all the other narrow built stuff in the world, it was well worth it. He'd been born skinny, and he'd been that way for most of his life. It drove him crazy, despite never being able to talk about it without fear of people not understanding. You're allowed to say you need to lose weight in society, but you can't say you need to gain some. It's a massive trigger that makes all sorts of people give you dirty looks. You'd think you just told them that you were into squirrel fucking or something. The rain increased its slaughter on the vehicle's window. Droplets the size of quarters hammered the glass. Owen clicked the wipers on. The two blades cut through the rain with lethal water force, leaving a clear view for him to see for only a few seconds before they completed their journey back to where they started. 
The Beach Boys harmonized their intent to have good vibrations as the music filled the inside of Owen's Jeep. His fingers rested casually on the dial and his palm on the gear shifter. Owen shook his head. Were they playing the same song twice in a row? That was odd. But what do you expect from an all Beach Boys satellite radio channel? Another fresh round of tears broke free from Owen's eyes. He wiped them away as he passed a road sign that stated Brightness Falls, the town site, for the park was only 10 kilometers away. What? Owen muttered to himself. The local kids must have been farting around with the park signs again. They'd done it when the town's annual festival, Brightfest, had been on. They'd changed the sign for Brightfest to Girthfest. Most people laughed it off, though a few were upset that the B was missing. They didn't want their tax dollars to have to pay to buy a new one. Owen had been in the prior group. He'd been the first to post it on his podcast social media pages. He'd gotten a lot of likes for it. Who knew people liked girth? He'd suspected it for years, but he'd never received that large of confirmation. Still, monkeying with a festival sign was one thing. Changing a distance marker that was outside the town site? That was a federal fine. He'd have to scare them straight with his best ranger voice. Owen grabbed his walkie from his backpack, double-checked the power and channel, then squeezed the talk button. Hey Beck, you up yet? Nothing but static greeted him. Beck? Again, nothing but static. That was odd. She was always up before him. It was her job to make sure all the animals being tracked by the park were nowhere near the town or popular visiting locations within the park. It never ends well when a bear or a moose get too close to a group of tourists. The tourists seem to lose their common sense when it comes to dangerous animals. The bear, on the other hand, just wanted to eat, and a stupid tourist is a delicious snack. So Beck made sure to keep the two groups apart. She'd like to get up early to do so. Beck, you there? Owen said as he tried one last time. A strange static echoed through the walkie. Owen turned the radio volume up and held the walkie up to his ear. The sound reminded him of what dial-up internet at his parents' house used to sound like. Lots of strange clicks and whirls. The Beach Boys harmonized their intent to have good vibrations. As the music filled the inside of Owen's Jeep, his finger rested casually on the radio dial and his palm on the gear shifter. The walkie was gone. Owen shook his head. What the hell? Another round of tears on Owen's face. Owen stared at the Brightness Falls science site as he passed it by, still only 10 kilometers. Owen slammed on the brakes and glanced behind him at the sign. One sign change was one thing, but there weren't that many signs between the ranger station and the town. The farting kids would have had to add signs to change. He wasn't sure they had that kind of dedication to prank. What was with the music? Why did the radio keep going back to the same song? Plus it wasn't even on a few seconds ago. Then there was the walkie that seemed to have vanished from his hand. Owen patted his backpack. He could feel the radio, along with the little box inside. So it had gone from his hand to his pack. How? Owen reached into the pack for his cell phone as he turned back around. The Beach Boys harmonized and filled the inside of Owen's Jeep as his fingers rested on the radio dial and his palm on the gear shifter. Tears ran down Owen's face. He was moving again, despite having just stopped to look at the back of the sign. The very sign he was passing by again, stating the town was only 10 kilometers away. What the Kokomo? Owen muttered as he smashed the radio power button with his fist and drove his foot down hard on the brake. The Beach Boys harmonized, Owen's fingers rested on the radio dial, and his palm on the gear shifter. Tears ran down his face. The 10 kilometer away sign passed by again as if it was giving him the middle finger. Well, this was just great. He was in some kind of loop? At least that's what it seemed like. But, but why had he restarted sometimes quicker than others? Apparently, turning the radio on was a big no-no. Rain pelted the window intensively. Owen turned the wipers on. The Beach Boys harmonized. Owen's finger rested on the radio dial and his palm on the shifter. Tears on his face. There was the 10-kilometer sign again. Okay, no wipers. This time, when the rain got harder, he left the wipers off. Despite how hard it was to see, he squinted to look through the massive drops. Okay, so far so good. He glanced in the rearview mirror. The sign was fading into the background. Owen laughed. Take that, you stupid fucking time loop sign. He flicked the sign the middle finger and laughed. The Beach Boys harmonized. Owen's finger rested on the radio dial and his palm on the shifter, tears on his face. And there was that stupid fucking time loop sign. Again, he left the wipers off when the rain started and watched the sign fade into the distance behind him. Now what? What had he done to cause this loop to restart last time? Giving the sign the finger? Who knew signs could be so sensitive? So what should he do? He really hated all this paranormal stuff, but he... Beck. She loved this garbage. He grabbed the walk and remembered he just tried calling her and got nothing but those weird sounds, so she wasn't going to be much help. This all felt way out of his comfort zone. He liked the Beach Boys and lifting heavy things then putting them down. Neither seemed applicable to what was happening to him. 
A thunderous crack echoed through the truck cab and over the sound of the rain pelting the truck. Owen tried to see between the raindrops what it was. It wasn't a sound that was local to the park. He'd never heard it before. It sounded like something massive snapping in two. Shit, Owen whispered, as he watched a commercial airplane plummeting to the ground. It streaked across the front window of his jeep. The plane's engine blazed red, obviously on fire, definitely not normal. He couldn't even remember the last time he saw a plane flying over the park. He was pretty sure this was a no-fly zone since the whole Brightness Falls incident. He watched the plane pulverize itself into the side of a mountain not far from town. A trail of fire followed it up. The forest around the crash site smoked. Shit, even with rain like this, a fire that size was going to spread easily through the forest. It had been years since they had the money to remove all the underbrush and kindling. The government had felt fighting forest fires wasn't worth the investment, but the tax breaks to corporate CEOs was. As Owen watched the fire spread down the mountain, his anger grew, and he really wished he could punch a couple dozen politicians in the face. There was a blur through the raindrops as something ran from the tree line to the road. Distracted by the plane crash and the fire, Owen reacted slowly, and the moose met the front of Owen's jeep. Its height sent the poor animal careening over the top of the jeep. Blood from the unfortunate creature mixed with the rainwater. Owen badly wanted to turn the wipers on, but... The Beach Boys harmonized. Owen's finger rested on the radio dial, his palm on the shifter, tears on his face. The moose's blood was gone, but the sign was back. He grabbed the radio. He had to let someone know that the plane crash was going to happen. Maybe he could stop it. He pressed the walkie button as he was met by the strange noises. Sweet suffering safari, Owen yelled. As he rolled his window down, and before he could throw the walkie out, the Beach Boys harmonized. His finger rested on the radio dial, and his palm on the shifter. There was the sign. He wanted to punch every inch of the inside of the jeep, then get out and punch everything else on the outside too. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath. He wondered what Caroline was doing. He wasn't sure how many loops he'd been through so far, but it felt like forever since he'd seen her. And while he was still pissed off about the night before, he still loved her. Crisis and time loops tend to remind you of important things in life. Owen opened his eyes as he passed the sign again. So the moose. What was he supposed to do about the moose hitting the jeep? Was he supposed to do something or not do something? He ignored the rain as he thought about it. He was actually getting used to driving through the big drops. After passing by the sign at least 30 more times, he'd lost count after that. His frustration was reaching Hulk levels. If he could shred his pants and grow 20 sizes larger, he'd gladly do so. At least it would be a cathartic release. This was, well, it was hell. His own personal own hell. No Caroline, a forest fire, a plane crash, murdered moose, broken radio, missed podcasting opportunity. The reoccurring song was killing his love of one of his favorite Beach Boy songs, and worst of all, he felt like a complete idiot for not being able to figure it all out. He knew he wasn't book smart, but, but now he was wondering if maybe his mom had been humoring him about being special. He was pretty sure a brick sitting here on the gas pedal could do a better job than he could. He tried opening his window to various heights, slowing down, shifting gears, turning the AC on and off, and a few other dozen more things he couldn't even remember now. The worst part of it was that if he got past the moose, then what? He'd have to figure out another thing? He'd have to start the whole process over again. The more he thought about it, the more shocked he was that he'd made it this far at all. Frustrated and taking a page from the Brick's book, Owen hammered on the gas. What if he killed himself, drove the jeep right into a tree? Would that do anything? The jeep passed 88 miles per hour. Maybe he could. The moose bounded over the road in the rearview mirror. Owen threw his hands in the air. Yes! Take that, you stupid inanimate object. Owen yelled as the sign vanished from his rearview mirror. He'd done it. He'd gotten past the moose and out of the loop. Except, shit. The Beach Boys harmonized. Owen's finger rested on the radio dial and his palm on the shifter. Tears on his face. The sign, like a gigantic middle finger, passed by the jeep. Did you see it? Sorry. Remember everything because you're going to need it. I can't lay it out for you because I'm not sure I understand it. Still, the message, the idea is big. And well, you'll see. So this was a little different. This is actually the first chapter of a novel I plan to write. I was a little too ambitious in thinking what I was able to write at the same time. And unfortunately this book had to be paused. But if you liked it and want to see the complete story let me know. Use hashtag RangerLoop and at me Von Ashby on social media. Hey my name is Von Ashby. I wrote this. 
If you liked what you heard, head on over to vonashby.com slash free and pick up a free novel or a bunch of other free stuff. Go explore the Aurora Wasteland yourself at aurorawasteland.com. Don't forget to check out the Stories from the Wasteland podcast and search for Von Ashby on YouTube for video versions and other exciting videos. Thanks for listening.